Gambia, Angola, China Holding, Gosh, producers of the finest tomato paste in the Gambia, Jaja tomato paste, available in 5 kilos, 1 kilo and in sachets. For wholesale and retail, visit our factory at Banjulanding. We are also producers of Jaja mineral water, cool, clear and fresh. Gosh, Gambia, Angola, China Holding, with headquarters at Fatu Golden Plaza, Mile 7, Bertel Harding Highway. Gosh Group also provides the best security company. Gash Security for your offices, warehouses, homes, and personal property. Gash Group for all your construction projects, offering you quality water reticulation for your gardens, pump irrigation, tidal irrigation projects, and all types of buildings. You can contact Gash on 396 7894 7003 373 0259. Visit us at Gash Global Group on Battle Harden Highway, Fatu Golden Plaza. Our website www.gashglobal.com. Gambia, Angola, China Holding. Gosh. Yunus English School. For quality and affordable education, look no further. Yunus English School has what you've been looking for. Yunus English School is a leading institution in the Gambia with nursery, lower basic, upper basic, and senior secondary education with magnificent teaching and learning facilities. Yunus English School has highly qualified and experienced teaching staff preparing students for university and beyond. Yunus English School is an institution with distinct academic excellence and the school operates not only in the usual five days a week but six days a week Mondays to Saturdays breaking a remarkable record on credit our coverage for all our students contact Yunus English School today to register your children on 7781443 or 7070091 or still on 9249426 Better still, you can email yunusenglish at yahoo.com. At Yunus English School, excellence is a priority without compromise. His Excellency President Adam Abaro has demonstrated his leadership for the development of the country. He has realized the importance of infrastructure for any meaningful outcome to take place. For inclusive development to occur, President Barrow prioritizes rural roads development, constructing highways, bridges, and rural feeder roads. Infrastructure includes the construction of modern markets, an international conference center, and making healthcare more accessible. Under the Barrow administration, the Gambia has put on its smile again and opened to the world and bent on providing ultra-modern facilities to welcome visitors at the Banjul International Airport. Building modern classrooms, creating a conducive environment for teaching and learning is worth the investment in education to enhance skills development and acquisition. President Barrow commits to improving electricity transmission and distribution as it is a bedrock for socio-economic advancement. These are just the tip of the iceberg why you are all invited to join the National People's Party to accompany President Adam Barrow to the IEC headquarters on Thursday, 4th November 2021 to present his nomination papers for the presidential elections 2021. Barrow is for peace, progress and unity for Gambians. The Gambia goes to the polls on December 4th, 2021 to elect a president who will steer the affairs of the country for the next five years. As the country prepares for this spirited national exercise, the National Council for Civic Education, NCCE, reminds the public that the conduct of presidential election is a constitutional requirement as enshrined in Section 46 of the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia and voting a civic duty which every eligible patriotic citizen should discharge on December 4, 2021 as enshrined in Sections 26 and 39 of the Constitution. As politicians embark on campaign trails across the length and breadth of the country, conversing for votes, the NCCE reminds the public that political participation, association and voting are fundamental rights of every citizen, hence the need to exercise tolerance and civility throughout the period and refrain from the use of abusive language, hate speech, provocative actions, intimidation, Thuggery and physical confrontation at all times as these contravene the laws of the Gambia. 
The general public is encouraged to stay away from any altercation and follow due process to seek redress when the need arises to ensure peace and stability throughout the process. Our collective desire for accelerated socio-economic growth and development could only be achieved in an atmosphere of peace and tranquility. The Gambia has a secret ballot system. Your vote is secret and will not be known by anyone. Every vote is important in an election as each can make a difference and as customary, counting shall be on the spot. Political affiliation is your right. Your vote, your choice. Vote wisely. This message is brought to you by the National Council for Civic Education with support from the United Nations Development Programme. South Africa Global is the first and biggest private estate developer in the Gambia and presence in seven other African countries. We take pride in leading innovation in all spheres of real estate sector in the Gambia and beyond. As such, we are launching the development of the first smart and modern office and retail towers in the Gambia called Taf Twins. The Taf Twins is located in the heart of the Carnifing Institutional Area and 10 minutes drive away from Banjo. Taf Twins is designed to have five floors of office spaces ranging from 50 square meters to over 1,000 square meters with two elevators, central air conditioning, 24 hours electricity and water supply with the ground floor reserved for banking, supermarket, restaurant and coffee shop. For your bookings and reservations, please call now on 376-2333 or 776-2333. Thank you. The Red Cross Emblem The unauthorized use of the Red Cross Emblem in the Gambia is illegal and punishable by law. Did you know that in the Gambia, only the Gambia Red Cross Society and the medical services of the Gambia Armed Forces with specific restrictions are allowed to use the Red Cross Emblem? Did you know that the use of the Red Cross Emblem by commercial entities such as hospitals, pharmacies, health posts, private and public properties is also considered as misuse of the emblem, that its misuse could threaten Red Cross missions and put humanitarian workers at risk. The emblem is fully protected by the international humanitarian law and the laws of the Gambia, and its misuse by any other party leads to its violation, which is sanctioned with penalties. The Gambia Red Cross utilized the emblem to signify our promise, neutrality and impartiality, to provide assistance to all people in need regardless of race, color, belief, religion or political affiliation. It serves as a symbol of protection and assistance for the Red Cross teams, while to those we serve, it is a symbol of hope. Let's know, respect and protect the Red Cross emblem. It's a warm welcome to our studio here in Sarekunda. This is Star TV News with me, Mumudu Bailabari. In the headlines tonight, Baro to build one of Gambia's biggest hospitals in Farato. NPP executives upscale campaign in URR days to election. CA to begin campaign on Sunday after defeating IEC in court. Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital to be renovated at 176 million. SFL says Gambian youth signal change. On the international scene, DR Congo worker abuse, foreign owned companies prioritizing profit. US businesses face supply shortages ahead of holidays. Global supply crisis, shipping delays for Chinese made goods. These were the headlines, and now the news in detail. The National People's Party on Thursday conducted a meeting in Gunjur where President Baro revealed that his administration will build one of the country's biggest hospitals in Farato. This story by Mariam Adem is narrated in our studios by Jacqueline Colley. 
The NPP's campaign trail yesterday reached Gunjur in Kombo South, where different speakers made their needs known to the incumbent as they promised him of victory. The Alcalo of Gunjur, Alaji Dembo Dabo, described the president as an honest man who has brought unprecedented development to Gambians that no one can dispute and said victory for Baro is certain in his village. Lamin Jamba Jamme advised all APRC supporters to put aside anger and rally behind the president for a better Gambia that will positively impact their lives. The NPP constituency chairman, Bubakar, Bubakar Jaite, assured President Barrow of victory come December 4th. The NPP flag bearer, President Adam Barrow, thanked the people of Gunjur for their turnout and assurance of victory. <laughs> He also revealed that his government is set to build a hospital in Farato that will be one of the biggest in Africa and three times the size of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. Baro reaffirmed his, his government's keenness in providing salaries for village heads, health insurance to Gambians and strengthening the fisheries sector. He urged the people of Gunju to take ownership of the $50 million that will be injected into the sector. Meanwhile, President Barrow and Ahmad Barrow responded to claims made by some campaign observers that the Gambian leader is using government resources for the campaign. In response, Barrow and Barr said the story is unfounded and true. The duo clarified that President Barrow is the first and only president who uses his own cars for campaign instead of the official vehicles. Barrow noted that the only official vehicles they are using are security cars and he has provided the same security to all political parties on campaign who are using government vehicles and are being paid allowances by the government. Jacqueline Colley for Star TV News. Some executive members of the National People's Party led by businessman Haji Sisoko are upscaling their campaign in other parts of the URR. Details in this report. Successful businessman and an influential NPP figure, Haji Baniko Sisoko is leading the front in the Upper River region for President Adam Barrow's re-election. Honorable Baniko is being supported by other NPP executives as they crisscross the URR to sell President Adam Barrow's agenda to the voters. Earlier in the week, the HBC Soho led NPP executives held fruitful meetings in various communities of Kantora and Tumana constituency, where C Soho urged the constituents to continue giving their support, allegiance, and loyalty to President Barrow. He told the various meetings that the people of URR should continue supporting President Adam Obaro as he is the only one who can rise up to their development challenges and the country at large. Honorable Sisoho also admonished the people of URR to be courageous and fear nothing in the exercise of their civic rights. You should not harbor any fear for the police or anyone because you are part of the government. Exercise your civic rights with caution and courage. Do not have any fear in the polling booths. Be careful and be circumspect whilst you cast your votes, he advised. I'm <laughs> 
The business tycoon particularly encouraged the youths of URR to vote en masse for the president to enable them actualize their dreams and aspirations as well as the general good of the country. The team will meanwhile hold meetings in other constituencies of the URR this weekend. Reporting for StarTV News, I am Awasani. The leader of the Citizens Alliance, Dr. Ismail Assise, informed journalists on Friday that the party will begin campaign on Sunday after winning the court against IEC nomination rejection. More in this report by Binta Kole. CA's nomination was rejected according to the IEC because its candidate has not complied with Section 42, Subsection 2, Paragraph A. In Banjul administrative area, he submitted the support of nomination by less than 200 registered voters, as opposed to the legal requirement. However, Dr. Ismail Assis sued the Independent Electoral Commission for illegally rejecting his nomination, in which Judge Amina Saho Sise on Tuesday ruled that the Independent Electoral Commission's wanting disregard and non-compliance with prescription of the law and its own guidelines profoundly violated the rights of Dr. Ismail Assis to stand for election. However, the IEC wants to spitefully exclude us exclude my candidacy from the December 4th presidential elections. This is very credible information. They've made up their mind. They're determined. And we'll give you reasons why. That they want to exclude us from the December 4th elections, which one is in violation of our fundamental rights, but also in contempt of court order. We heard yesterday that they had appealed uh, the court ruling. But that appeal does not stop the court order until there's a stay of execution from the same court. Once that stay of execution is not served to us, therefore IEC must go ahead and consider our application and process our application as soon as possible to allow us to run for the December 4th presidential elections. Again, we have very credible information that they are now planning to also reject the papers we've served them yesterday on non-legal grounds. The only reason they can reject nomination papers is on legal grounds. We also have credible information that they are planning to reject our nomination papers we served them yesterday on non-legal grounds now IEC's blatant violation of the election act should be in the aid or the election act by not complying with section 47.3 and section 47.1 of the electoral act by doing so they fail to comply with their own law IEC are vehemently bent on depriving us or myself of what? And the courts made a ruling that the whole world heard about, that IEC acted outside the framework of the law and they should allow us to run for office. 
The leader of CA said the IEC is acting discriminatory after the court ruled on CA's favor. They are now bent on frustrating the judgment by filing an appeal only to delay and stall my opportunity in this case. They are acting in a delusionary tactics and we have very little faith and trust in the IEC is acting in bad faith. Let me repeat. IEC is acting in bad faith. They are discriminatory and very little faith and trust in the IEC. We are aware that the IEC lacks the capacity and the competence and are ill-prepared. But this is not our fault. And so we should not be punished for this. We think it is on fire to arbitrarily prey on myself and Honorable Maifati and other candidates. The IEC is yet to act fairly and they have even submitted a fresh nomination application, but that will not stop them from commencing campaign this Sunday. Because of this issue of law, the High Court made a ruling that IEC acted in a manner which is not in line with their own very law. Allow Citizens Alliance to submit fresh nomination papers for the Banjul administrative area, then it should allow us to run for president. That yesterday at 11.40, we submitted 331 signatures from Banjul. But remember that according to IEC, as seen in the court papers, so after us, of the 296 signatures we submitted previously, only 115 were valid. The rest, they said, we lost because we submitted after many candidates, and that is was IAC's decision because they made the timetable. So we had 115 valid signatures with IAC. Yesterday, we submitted 200, 331. It means IAC should have enough signatures from us to make sure that we meet the requirement of the 200. So yesterday, in accordance with the court ruling that we be given the chance to submit fresh nominations, we did that yesterday and submitted 331 at 11.40 at Election House. Dr. Sise added that while other presidential candidates are on campaign for the past two weeks and CA was in court fighting for its right to contest this December election. It should be guided by the principles of fairness, equity and transparency. Unfortunately, that is not the situation. We are informing the IEC that we are going ahead. They can stop us. We are starting our campaigning on Sunday and we are going to contest these elections and Sambujang and IEC cannot stop us. We are more resolved now than ever, ever before. We've been patient for far too long and they've pushed us. IEC must be restrained or we cannot be restrained any further. We are going for elections. We are going to start our campaigning on Sunday and let us inform everybody of that state. IEC is bent on ensuring that we don't contest because they've already made a determination. And in a meeting recently held by IEC and stakeholders, IEC or Sambujang's made a fault. They will therefore make good use of the few days left to election. The Star TV News, I am Bintakuli. The Minister of Health said on Thursday that following the awarding of the contract for the renovation of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital at a cost of $176 million, construction works will start soon in phases. More in this report. The construction, once commenced, may pose some challenges to patients and visitors in affected areas, particularly the accident and emergency unit during the period. The Health Ministry said in a press release, Therefore, all accidents and other emergency cases in adults will be temporarily seen at the Edward Francis Mall Teaching Hospital Bacow Center, formerly called Nemban Clinic, starting 24th November 2021, the release added. During the renovation phase, all referral meant for the accident and emergency unit at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital in Banjul are requested to go to Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital Bacow Center. 
However, maternity-related cases will continue to be seen at Edward Francis Montagin Hospital in Banjul. The ministry advised as it solicits the support and cooperation of the public and all health facilities during the period of the renovation works at the Edward Francis Montagin Hospital in Banjul. Reporting for Star TV News, I'm Hadi Mja. Presidential hopeful Esa Mbaifal has returned from the first leg of his campaign and some of the things that he observed on the campaign trial include the burning desire of youths to effect a positive change. Here's an excerpt of false interview shortly after returning from several days of vote seeking. <laughs> And those were the local stories. We'll be back with the international news after this short break. Gambia, Angola, China holding Gash, producers of the finest tomato paste in the Gambia. Jeja tomato paste, available in 5 kilos, 1 kilo and in sachets. For wholesale and retail, visit our factory at Banjulanding. We are also producers of Jeja mineral water, cool, clear and fresh. Gash, Gambia, Angola, China holding, with headquarters at Fatu Golden Plaza, Mile 7, Bertel Harding Highway. Gash Group also provides the best security company. Company, Gash Security for your offices, warehouses, homes, and personal property. Gash Group for all your construction projects, offering you quality water reticulation for your gardens, pump irrigation, tidal irrigation projects, and all types of buildings. You can contact Gash on 396 7894 7003 373 0259. Visit us at Gash Global Group on Battle Harden Highway, Fatu golden plaza our website www.global.com gambia angola china holding gosh yunus english school for quality and affordable education look no further yunus english school has what you've been looking for yunus english school is a leading institution in the gambia with nursery lower basic upper basic and senior secondary education with magnificent teaching and learning facilities yunus english school has highly qualified and experienced teaching staff preparing students for university and beyond yunus english school is an institution with distinct academic excellence and the school operates not only in the usual five days a week but six days a week Mondays to Saturdays breaking a remarkable record on credit our coverage for all our students contact Yunus English School today to register your children on 7781443 or 7070091 or still on 9249426 Better still, you can email yunusenglish at yahoo.com. At Yunus English School, excellence is a priority without compromise. 
His Excellency President Adam Abaro has demonstrated his leadership for the development of the country. He has realized the importance of infrastructure for any meaningful outcome to take place. For inclusive development to occur, President Barrow prioritizes rural roads development, constructing highways, bridges, and rural feeder roads. Infrastructure includes the construction of modern markets, an international conference center, and making healthcare more accessible. Under the Barrow administration, the Gambia has put on its smile again and opened to the world and bent on providing ultra-modern facilities to welcome visitors at the Banjul International Airport. Building modern classrooms, creating a conducive environment for teaching and learning is worth the investment in education to enhance skills development and acquisition. President Barrow commits to improving electricity transmission and distribution as it is a bedrock for socio-economic advancement. These are just the tip of the iceberg why you are all invited to join the National People's Party to accompany President Adam Barrow to the IEC headquarters on Thursday, 4th November 2021 to present his nomination papers for the presidential elections 2021. Barrow is for peace, progress and unity for Gambians. The Gambia goes to the polls on December 4th, 2021 to elect a president who will steer the affairs of the country for the next five years. As the country prepares for this spirited national exercise, the National Council for Civic Education, NCCE, reminds the public that the conduct of presidential election is a constitutional requirement as enshrined in Section 46 of the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia and voting a civic duty which every eligible patriotic citizen should discharge on December 4, 2021 as enshrined in Sections 26 and 39 of the Constitution. As politicians embark on campaign trails across the length and breadth of the country conversing for votes, the NCCE reminds the public that political participation, association and voting are fundamental rights of every citizen, hence the need to exercise tolerance and civility throughout the period and refrain from the use of abusive language, hate speech, provocative actions, intimidation, surgery and physical confrontation at all times as these contravene the laws of the Gambia. The general public is encouraged to stay away from any altercation and follow due process to seek redress when the need arises to ensure peace and stability throughout the process. Our collective desire for accelerated socio-economic growth and development could only be achieved in an atmosphere of peace and tranquility. The Gambia has a secret ballot system. Your vote is secret and will not be known by anyone. Every vote is important in an election as each can make a difference and as customary, counting shall be on the spot. Political affiliation is your right. Your vote, your choice. Vote wisely. This message is brought to you by the National Council for Civic Education with support from the United Nations Development Programme. CAF Africa Global is the first and biggest private estate developer in the Gambia and presence in seven other African countries. We take pride in leading innovation in all spheres of real estate sector in the Gambia and beyond. As such, we are launching the development of the first smart and modern office and retail towers in the Gambia called TAF Twins. The TAF Twins is located in the heart of the Carnifin Institutional Area and 10 minutes drive away from Banjo. TAF Twins is designed to have five floors of office spaces ranging from 50 square meters to over 1,000 square meters with two elevators, central air conditioning, 24 hours electricity and water supply with the ground floor reserved for banking, supermarket, restaurant and coffee shop. For your bookings and reservations, please call now on 376-2333 or 776-2333. Thank you. The Red Cross Emblem The unauthorized use of the Red Cross Emblem in the Gambia is illegal and punishable by law. Did you know that in the Gambia, 
Only the Gambia Red Cross Society and the medical services of the Gambia Armed Forces with specific restrictions are allowed to use the Red Cross emblem? Did you know that the use of the Red Cross emblem by commercial entities such as hospitals, pharmacies, health posts, private and public properties is also considered as misuse of the emblem? That its misuse could threaten Red Cross missions and put humanitarian workers at risk? The emblem is fully protected by the international humanitarian law and the laws of the Gambia and its misuse by any other party leads to its violation which is sanctioned with penalties. The Gambia Red Cross utilized the emblem to signify our promise, neutrality and impartiality to provide assistance to all people in need regardless of race, color, belief, religion or political affiliation. It serves as a symbol of protection and assistance for the Red Cross teams, while to those we serve, it is a symbol of hope. Let's know, respect and protect the Red Cross emblem. Welcome back after that break in commercials. If you are just tuning in, this is Tativi News from our studios here in Sarakonda. And now to the international news. Riot groups have accused of foreign-owned mining companies in the Democratic Republic of Congo of widespread abuse, including physical beatings. Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb reports from in Lualaba Province, DRC, warning this report contains disturbing images. Gerard Colombo went to work as normal on the 11th of October. His family haven't seen him since. He was a truck driver at an industrial cobalt mine that belongs to a Chinese company here in the Democratic Republic of Congo. His wife's too traumatized to talk about it. Gerard's brother, Jean Patrick, was told about what happened by another worker. His truck broke down in the mine at around 3.30 in the morning. He reported it on the radio and waited for help. When his colleague arrived later and opened the truck cab, he found only his hard hat, his shoes and blood. Other workers filmed what they saw on a mobile phone. They're saying, you Chinese have slaughtered him. Where's his body? Days later, this video was circulated on social media. A worker films two men wearing the mine's uniform and accuses them of burying a body. It's left Gerard's family wondering if it was him. They went to ask at the mine. They say the managers gave them $500 and this signed paper stating that the money was for mourning. But they didn't answer any questions. This is where Gerard worked. The company's called Sikomine. It didn't respond to our requests for comment. It's one of several state-backed Chinese companies that have bought most of the cobalt mines. Gerard's disappearance is just the latest of many allegations of abuses committed by foreign mine managers. Mined minerals make up almost all of Congo's exports and here, the city of Kolwezi is at the heart of it, especially for cobalt. Foreign mining companies earn a lot more wealth from it than most of the workers here and there's a feeling among many miners that some of the foreign workers simply don't care about the rights of Congolese people. This social media video shows Chinese managers ordering Congolese soldiers to beat men who tried to steal rocks with cobalt, for which demand is soaring for its use in electric vehicles. The provincial governor told us she's cracking down on mistreatment in mines. When I saw one of the workers being beaten, you can ask, I make my decision, these Chinese people was being arrested, they was in prison. Their arrest was well publicized. Rights groups say they were discreetly released soon after. The state authorities are very weak in the face of Chinese economic and political interest. The Chinese companies have ministers and MPs in on their deals. This makes them very powerful and uncontrollable. Jean and his brothers meet almost every day by the courthouse in Kolwezi to check on the public prosecutor's investigation into Gerard's disappearance. They say the delays and excuses just keep coming. They're worried there'll never be justice for Gerard, but they keep seeking it. There's nothing else they can do. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Kolwezi, Democratic Republic of Congo. The coronavirus pandemic has sorted many business and closed borders around the world, leading the disruptions in global supply chains. 
Now the US is bracing for delays that could stretch into Christmas as business try to get their goods through bottlenecks. And it is severely affecting this company's ability to conduct their day-to-day -day operations. Al Jazeera's Gabriel Elizondo reports from Hobeken in New Jersey, the US. There's no shortage of foam in the frothy cappuccinos at Cowabunga Coffee Shop. What there is a shortage of is pretty much everything else. The global supply chain strain has made it difficult to keep the coffee shop stocked with essential food and beverages. The sign on the door says it all. Customers are urged to be patient with staff members because they're out of a lot of stuff. We're short on everything from uh, bacon, crayons, straws, cups, um, silverware packets, uh, you know, ketchup packets, thing, just small things. Take this coffee cup and its lid. It most certainly was manufactured in China. And according to one supply chain expert I spoke to, it probably took over 200 different entities to get this from the factory in China to the coffee shop here in New Jersey. The supply chain is like dominoes. One falls, they all fall. The well-documented supply chain problems could be exacerbated during the Christmas holiday shopping season and into Lunar New Year in February. Experts say a few big companies are prepared, but most are not. For 99% of the companies on earth, they are managing with spreadsheets and emails, and it is taking 50 or 60 phone calls to manage one shipment. And we have people in the industry literally breaking down in tears over the pain of trying to keep track of a thousand shipments across the world. Oh, it gets very hectic in here, especially Saturdays and Sundays. For Erica, when she calls her distributors asking when she can reliably get supplies for the coffee shop, the answer she is given is not what she is looking for. Right now we're being told that at minimum 10 months, at maximum about 20 months until our supply chain here is completely back to normal. You said all foam, right? For her and millions of business owners around the world, it can't come soon enough. Gabriel Zondo, Al Jazeera, Hoboken, New Jersey. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused logistical headaches for global shippers, thanks to risk transport costs quarantine measures, and extra paperwork. China's zero tolerance approach to the coronavirus has not helped. In May, it closed one of its busiest ports of because a COVID-19 outbreak that has affected the supply of Chinese products to the United States, dampening the Thanksgiving Day holiday sales, when shoppers are traditionally on the hunt for bargains. Al Jazeera's Katrina Yu reports from Beijing, China. This factory on the outskirts of Shanghai produces three million bicycles every year. They're shipped all around the world, but most are sent to the U.S. to be sold in major sports and department stores. The pandemic has led to a boost in demand, but a crisis in global supply chains has made them more difficult to transport. The bikes are already produced, but they just sit in my factory. We can't send them to America because of the shortage in logistics. So I have to rent a warehouse just to store them, and that adds an extra cost to my product because of the transportation and the porters. Lei Ge says reduced freight has led to soaring container costs. He now pays an additional $2,000 per shipping container, bringing the total to more than $10,000. Bicycles aren't the only products affected. Chinese manufacturers of items such as electronics, clothing, toys and furniture are also facing backlogs. So over time, that's been roughly a two to one ratio where two containers go out, one container comes back in. Now that we're seeing this burst in global demand, that ratio has shifted. We're probably about five to one now. And so what that means is the containers are piling up in Los Angeles and there's not enough containers available here in Shanghai to put goods into. Care Gibbs says China's zero-tolerance approach to the coronavirus has worsened supply chain problems. Ports in the south and east were shut down after staff became infected. Incoming crews must undergo strict testing and quarantine, fueling bottlenecks. Closed borders have also led to staffing problems for foreign-operated companies. Quarantine uh, is an issue. Um, availability of commercial flights is an issue and also um, more consistency and transparency around who can come in and under what circumstances. 
flooding in central China and a nationwide electricity shortage have further slowed production. Authorities here say the power crunch has eased and many factories have returned to normal production. But smaller exporters are struggling to cope with the surging cost of raw materials. Factory gate inflation hit a 26-year high in October. Lei Ge says he's coping with his losses by increasing the price of his bicycles. He's confident his factory will ride out the global supply chain storm, but expects the difficulties to continue next year. Katrina Yu, Al Jazeera, Beijing. And for any news, a quick recap of our main headlines. Baro to build one of Gambia's biggest hospitals in Farato. NPP executives upscale campaign in URR days to election. CA to begin campaign on Sunday after defeating IEC in court. Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital to be renovated at 176 million. Esa Fall says Gambian youth signal change. On the international scene, DR Congo worker abuse foreign owned companies prioritizing profit. U.S. businesses face supply shortages ahead of holidays. Global supply crisis shipping delays for Chinese-made goods. And that's all for this edition of the news. Thank you very much for watching. Do join us tomorrow for more news. Till then, do have a very good night.